I would like to take uh, Chao Tong Yuan. He's our, one of our very skillful endovascular surgeons. He did by Professor Xu and Professor Tiang Xiaoli. He is speaking today of op reopening of the occluded carotid artery. Or this is right, Dr. Chao? Yeah, I'm here, Professor. Can you hear me? Yes. I can hear you. So please just go ahead with your lecture. Okay. Can you see the lecture? Uh, he's starting to, yes. Okay, you got to enlarge it. Yeah. Okay. Thank per you, perfect. President. Perfect. And, perfect. and President Yuha. And my topic about this letter is uh, internal carotid artery chronic, long cemental total occlusion recognized by hybrid operation. Go to the first slide. Okay. Yeah. Summaries. In most cases of chronic total occlusion of the RC, collateral flow has to compensate for the reduced blood supply to the brain. However, inadequate cerebral perfusion where collateral vessels come still cause ischemic symptoms. External carotid and the internal carotid artery bypass surgery may have a role in some of these cases, but the, the sending blood flow may not be adequate, may not completely reduce the risk of ischemic stroke. And the vascular angioplasty for total occlusion of RCA have been reported, but it's a challenging procedure. This is our one center clinical study in our hospital. Case series from May 2018 to July 2019. All the cases of internal carotid artery total occlusion treated in our center by interventional therapy or by hybrid therapy. In character, including criteria, long symptoms, long sedimental RCA occlusion, B, symptomatic RCA occlusion. C, chronic RCA occlusion from, uh, explain this, uh, uh, this time, from the least symptom onset more than three weeks. D, atherosclerosis disease. E, the distal residual lumen above the occluded sediment are normal. F, cerebral hyperperfusion. Pro operation, we should make a CTP and a PWI examination to find whether there was hypoperfusion. This is the way of included cases. Uh, first, when we found a patient suffer from a symptomatic cardiac artery occlusion, we should make a perfusion examination to, to find whether the patient is normal perfusion or the percent or the capacitate stage. If the patients have a normal perfusion, this patient can be transferred to conservation treatment. If the patients are in decompensated stage, and we could make sure whether this patient can be treated by uh, operation to recognize the occluded artery. The baseline of eligible cases from me 2015 to July 2019, there was a total 64 cases included to this series. Uh, there was uh, uh, 56 males and eight female. The average age is 57 years location. Uh, there, was, uh, there were 31 patients located at the left side and 33 look at the at the right side. The time from the latest symptom attack to surgery is always about 28 days with the two, two years. Median time is 30 days. Preoperative modified ranking scores is one to five degree. This is the end.
This is the end of the grouped part. The grouped part to C2 segment is 30, is 13 patients. To occluded to C3 segment is four patients. Uh, to C4 segment is, fifth, is 14 patients. Uh, occluded to C5 segment is 30 cases and above only three cases. We treat these patients, uh, the method is uh, by hybrid operation or by interventional operation treatment. There were total 32 cases treated by hybrid operation and uh, 32 cases treated by interventional, open, interventional therapy. It does. Total success rate is uh, 54 in CT4, uh, 84%. In hybrid operation route, route there was 30 patients success recognized the artery, but in interventional therapy group, there was only 24 patients recognized. There was only 75%, 75%. Total complication rate, 10 in CT4, uh, is have a, a CT a complication rate. One in this series died because M1 implies the caused by a large area ischemic infarction eventually contribute the patient to die. Several embolization by small debris in three cases. Hypoglossal no absolute injury caused several, se severe swallow problem in one case. Cervical edema and uh, apnea in one case. And uh, recurrent large neural now in Jared in one case. We occluded without symptoms in one week post procedure in two cases. Carotid cavernous fistula in one case. Follow up. Imagine follow up in 52 cases, average follow time is 12 months. During follow up, there was re occluded in seven cases, and the one in seven is a symptoms symptomatic occlusion. Clinical follow up in 57 cases with a media time is uh, 80, 18 months. Recurrent ischemic cerebral ischemic function presented in one cases. This is the case one, Bill, CT8 years old, with the right side weakness and the influent language for 10 years and symptoms recurrent since 10 days ago. From pre operated, imagine we can see that patient, the left IC total occluded from initial to coronal segment. These patients have ophthalmic artery blood reverse to coronal segment. And pre-operative, there was a small infection located at the left hemisphere, and the left hemisphere have hypoperfusion. We treated this patient by hybrid operation. At first, we do a CA. We moved the plaque located at the carotid sinus. And then we put some stent in the carotid, in the internal carotid. And uh, at last, there was a small stenosis. We tried to dilate this stenosis at uh, 12 ATM. The pressure, but the stenosis is still, still have a little residual. After procedure, we make a with the uh, PWI to pre-operation 
we can see there was a obviously change pre and post procedure. The MTTP, MTT, and the CDF have a very large changes. Post procedure, we followed this patient uh, eight months later. We can see the RCA appears very good. And uh, there was a, a stenosis post procedure still very no, very, very so stenosis. At that time, we tried to dilate this stenosis with a balloon, but we failed to enlarge the diameter. Case is two. This is a right RC occluded. The time since occlusion onset about one month before surgery. We can see the right hemisphere, there was a large area ischemic. And the, the right RCA from the initial, from the carotid sinus, there was uh, occluded. And uh, the distal of the occlusion segment uh, up to ophthalmic segment. This is the DFA before operation. We can see there was a uh, occluded at the sinus of carotid. And uh, the compensatory path from ACAM of the ophthalmic and of oph ophthalmic artery. And some pale artery from post circulation. At last, we failed this uh, operation because the guideline cannot pass through the C6 to MC. Maybe there was a stiff plaque or a fiber, fibrous cap located at the C6 segment. This, this operation, we failed to recognize the artery. Pathology examination. The thrombosis in different stage. One month, two months, half years, half years to two years, they have uh, aggravated changes. From at first we can see some fresh thrombosis, red thrombosis, and uh, at last we can see white thrombosis. thrombosis. And we see the thrombosis in the microcope. Uh, there was a worried change uh, from different period of the, of the after carotid occlusion. Option of surgical methods, plaque located at the proximal side hybrid operation, other type interventional operation. Case three. This is a male, 50 years old, left limbs weakness for 40 days. History, a hypertension and uh, MRF, two degrees. The time uh, since occlusion onset to operation, 40 days. The distal of occlusion segment up to a C4 segment. Pre and post operation, the PWI reveals there was a very changes and the TTP, MTT pre operation, there was obviously prolonged, but post procedure, the MTT and TTP become rather normal, and the CBF become normal after procedure. Interventional operation methods. This is the time post-procedure. This is seven days follow-up post-procedure. 
This is seven months follow up for the procedure. From this vision, you can see after procedure, the ICE recognized very well. And but uh, after seven months, we can see a little stenosis in the carotid, in the stent. But this patient has no symptoms. This four. This is a female, seated four years old. At first, we can see a large area ischemic infection located at a, a temporal loop. And from CT imaging, we can see the left internal carotid artery totally occluded. We make a DFA before procedure. We can see a reverse blood flow from ophthalmic artery, reverse to corner segment. From the initial, from sinus carotid, they were total occluded. Before operation, the left hemisphere uh, have a hyperperfusion. This patient we treated with a hybrid operation. At first, we make a CA at the left carotid, and then we put some stent in the RCA to make sure the artery can be recognized. During procedure, we pull out some thrombosis, a fresh thrombosis. For this patient, we input two self-expansion stent, three balloon expansion stent in total. This is a pre and post operation PWI. Uh, this patient have a very obviously changes after procedure. Unique cases. Case six, men. This is a male patient, 49 years old, uh, with a chin complaint, right limb weakness. Uh, this patient has uh, no supersal medical histories. Uh, from pre operation CTA, we can see the left carotid artery total occluded and the distal of the occlusion segment up to C5, C6 segment. And we can see there was a large area ischemic infection located at the left hemisphere and the PWI shows the left hemisphere hyperfusion From pre-operation DFA, we can see the right internal carotid artery have a severe curl. So from this uh, uh, DFA imaging, we can post the left carotid artery may be like the right as it have severe touches. So during recognition, we went through a micro character used guided with a micro guide wire. After we after we entered enter to MCA, we can see micro character have a severe curl in the internal carotid artery. During procedure, we put a stent want to strengthen the artery, but at last we failed to recognize this artery because uh, even we put in a stent, but the carotid artery still occluded. As similar to case four, case six, we did another case, a male, 61 years old. With the left hemisphere, uh, with the left hemiparesis for two months, aggravating for two weeks. This patient have right RCA occluded. 
This is the MRI pre-operation. This is PWI pre-operation. During procedure, we make a left internal carotid artery imaging. You can see there, were, there was a very slow curve and the right, right carotid artery total occluded. And the distal of the uh, occluded surgeon do not reveal in the DFA. For these patients, we implant five stents to make sure the artery can be recognized. After we put five stent, the RCA recognized very well. This is one week's follow-up. We can see the right internal artery, internal carotid artery recognized very well. Conclusion. Not every case in this series has benefits from recanalization surgery. Favorite operation may acquire easier success than interventional op operation. Favorite techniques is a challenging technique. No long sedimental occlusion can be recanalized by one simple routine method. The case number was limited in this study and the effective Active effectiveness of this hybrid technique requi requires further study with a large number of cases. That's all. Thanks. Okay, very good. Thank you, Zhao. Uh, we'd like to have uh, a few questions or comments from the panelists. If, well, let me get you off this the pan uh, screen share. Okay. Okay, any comments or questions from the panelists for, for, uh, for Zhao? Uh, for me, this is very interesting because I have been in, in, uh, in the thoughts that you should not open the occluded carotid artery. This is how it goes in my earlier experience. But yet, here you had more than 60 cases where the carotid artery was opened and with yeah. uh, rather good results. Okay, very good. Yes, sir. Can I ask a question, sir? Of course. Yeah. Uh, usually in uh, chronic total occlusion of the carotid, especially in long segment carotid occlusion, if the patient is symptomatic, the usual procedure is to do the STA, MCA bypass, uh, usual procedure to prevent the further uh, ischemic attack. But uh, you have done uh, the tremendous job here. You have done hybrid operation intervention to reopen the occluded long segment carotid. But it, it's a, a bit difficult job to reopen the long segment carotid. What is the advantage and disadvantage between these two procedures, STMCA bypass and in, in your hybrid operation or intervention procedure? Thanks for your question. Because we think if we do ECA, RCA bypass, I, we do not think that may be uh, adequate for, uh, for, they may be not adequate for uh, cerebral perfusion and uh, bypass may be uh, not uh, absolutely with release the rate of ischemic infection. But uh, if we do high flow bypass, there may be a good chance to resume, to release these uh, symptoms. But we do also do high blood flow bypass in our hospital. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I? Yes, okay, of course. Question. Of course. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, in, the in hybrid hey. surgery, 
in hybrid surgery, you have done the carotid end arterectomy and the interventional procedure in the same setting or in different setting? Uh, we do hybrid operation in one room. In one operation one, room. In the same yeah. uh, in the same surgery setting or or different uh, setting. That means same time or in different one. time. Same time. Same time. Carotid end arterectomy and uh, uh, stenting in the same time or or different procedure. That means uh, carotid in the same time. In the same time. In the same time. Same time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hi, John. You have. Uh, hey, Vlad. How you doing? I'm doing well. That was nice hi, today. Hi. Okay, Vlad. Introduce hi, yourself, hi. please, and uh, yeah. ask your question. Yeah, the, I'm very glad that someone is still dealing with scarotids because that was the topic of the 80s and the early 90s. Once the neurologists discovered the thrombolysis and all these uh, emergency stroke treatments, the carotids disappeared. So I'm glad that uh, someone still is interested in that. I have published my first series on uh, recanalization of occluded carotids in 1986. But all of them were like emergency, you know, acute uh, recanalization. Uh, we do not do these, uh, uh, let's say, uh, elective procedures and actually uh, there are a few points i would like to make make first thing is that there must be quite a lot of uh, pseudo occlusions which are slipping our uh, attention with cta you never are sure that really the carotid is occluded you do not see the remaining small tiny flow that's sometimes difficult even with angiography and uh, the same applies for ultrasound investigation uh, the second uh, is that uh, um, I'm not really sure that in this uh, late and truly occluded uh, the conditions, this is valuable. You have shown that it is, but uh, the complication rate was not really negligible. That was uh, rather high and uh, the option would definitely be uh, ECIC bypass, which we have seen excellent by Ben a, a few minutes ago. And uh, the last thing is that uh, in my experience, when dealing with truly occluded, there are uh, three conditions. First is that the uh, lumen is collapsed. That is the best. You, you perform antarterectomy and the, the carotid opens up uh, by itself, it's actually. The second is that uh, there is a red thrombus, which you can get back uh, using Fogarty or any other means. And uh, those carotids which were easy to reopen were those which were retrograde filled as uh, far as foramen lacerum. When the distal occlusion was more cranially, uh, we, we, we had the problems. And the third condition is that the carotid is occluded either by plaque or by white thrombus. And uh, these we didn't succeed uh, uh, at all. So, so these are things which should be considered and uh, I believe that uh, the hybrid uh, thing you have shown starting with enterterectomy and then going on for uh, endovascular is excellent. But uh, my question would be why not going endovascular first and test and in bifurcation and then go ahead. Those are the tandem lesions which you treat endovascularly, never by enterterectomy and distal stand. I do agree with you. If uh, the occluded uh, have a long period, such as if the uh, artery have occluded for far more six months, it's very hard to recognize. And uh, in this series, if the plaque located at the sinus, carotid sinus, we may try to do a CA at first, and then use a balloon to pull out the thrombosis about the atherosclerosis plaque. And uh, if uh, the plaque located at the C4 or to C5 segment, it's hard to recognize the, the artery just uh, through uh, it's very hard to wear the plaque 
use a guide wire or micro cutter because the plaque is too stiff, too hard to get through. Uh, for these patients, we do have a rather large uh, opportunity failed the operation. So uh, if we do think if the patient have a short segment, have a short distance from initial to distance, and uh, the plaque is uh, located at the proximal side, and this patient have a quite high chance uh, succeed the operation. And uh, we said balloon expansion. We said a balloon expansion stand in the cranial segment because we can use a, a very soft guiding catheter, a very, very up, a very, very, very up after we put the proximal stent at first and uh, the catheter went through the stent and uh, then put the stent above the stent we pre-implant. So uh, we can, we can uh, input a balloon expanding stent up to C4 to C6 segment. Yeah, that is. Okay, well, uh, uh, some more, more remarks, please. Uh, we are doing carotids on a regular basis. We have a series of, uh, say, something like 1,200 enterotrectomies and 800 stents. We favor uh, uh, enterotrectomy over stent. It's an uh, ICSS study and CRED study both have shown that uh, surgery is more effective and safer than stenting procedures. Uh, and there are few indications which are definitely uh, for endovascular treatment. Some them lesions, then uh, it's obvious. And the other one is uh, uh, dissection. And your, I guess yeah. that was case typi typical string sign. So I believe yeah. that there was a dissection, not, not the other. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Am I right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're okay. right. Thank yes, you. But congratulations, it was excellent. I'm, I'm really enthused that someone is still interested in these conditions because I don't remember when I have heard uh, any lecture on enterotrectomies and uh, things like that. People, and we as neurosurgeons, we are forgetting that this is a neurosurgical disease. Very good. Uh, thank you, uh, Juha, and thank you, Ben, thank uh, you, for both the presentation and the translation services. Uh, and, and thank Hugo for a great presentation. Um, and, and, and we look forward to next week. Uh, any ideas of what we're going to do, you have? Hi, John. Uh, Luis Salastano has some question. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, thanks for congratulations for the seminars. I think it, it, oh, I'm sorry about that, Luis. You got lost in the shuffle there. <laughs> but basically, I am originally from Argentina although I did my training here in the US, and then I, I joined Dr. Lanzino here at the Mayo Clinic. And my practice is mostly focused in carotid artery disease and cerebral revascularization in general. And I have actually a couple of questions for Zhao uh, Tongyan about the, the revascularization for CTOs, because we're starting to do similar work here. So I'm not sure if he's still on. Zhao, hi. Yeah, I'm yeah. here. Great, great talk, by the way. I have basically, you know, two, two technical questions. Um, you know, first of all, that we, we share the same rationale that you have, try to recanalize vessels, which on patients that are symptomatic and have uh, evidence of cancer. So the, the, the two technical question is, when you are doing the telescoping system with your stents, do you start proximally and go up, or you deploy the intracranial stent and then come back? That's question number one. And question number two is, in, in your experience, what kind of uh, embolization protection devices do you prefer? These filters or you use flow reversal with balloons or direct carotid access? Uh, during my experience, uh, when I recognized a carotid uh, occlusion, uh, after we do CA 
only very, very few patients have a, a reverse blood flow from distal. And uh, I think it's only about in one in five, one in five patients have a reverse blood flow. Mm -hmm. And one in five have blood reverse from the distal. And what about the second question? Hello, Louis. Yes, so basically yeah, yeah, you yeah. saying, you, but use distal protection devices like filters before you put all your stents? Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, okay. and then the, the stent deployment, the telescoping, you start at the bifurcation and you move up or the other way yeah. around? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so you ask, uh, so you我放一下他的问题 保护的措施，另外一个，他不是问你有没有反流的血，他是问你是从近端往远端放还是从远端往近端放。I implant a stent from initial, from proximal to distant, to distal, and uh, during we can recognize the uh, CTO, we do not use a, a protect device. Yeah, because I think that that could help to decrease some of the thromboembolic complications. Because at the beginning there is no flow reversal, but then upon opening the vessels, you may have some loose fragments, and that can go upstream, especially if there is flow yeah. coming from the internal. And you know there are there are double system balloons like the the you know that balloons that you put in the carotid common carotid and yeah. the external. Mama, mama system, yeah. yeah. Other system that you can just do a neck cut down like a ticker system and have good flow reversal. So yeah. Yeah, that's something that we're starting to to no, to see here. So yeah. anyway. Hi, hi, hi Sabascano. Yes, that is it. Yeah. Hi. Uh, can you uh, can we invite you to attend our webinar? Maybe next time you, you can introduce your experience in this kind of uh, procedure. Yeah, that would be uh, that would be a, a, a pleasure. Yeah, and, uh, great, great. Yeah, and I think we we have done as well some interesting work on how plaque ruptures, for example, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. how they rupture when they have no stenosis, and what we should do with those plaques, and how we can see those plaques using new imaging modalities, for example, laser angioscopy. So uh, yes, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I know your work. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll be in touch, Dr. Pat Savastano. Maybe yeah. in two weeks. In two weeks. Okay. Next week we have uh, yeah. Okay. Artificial head done. Okay. Um, okay, very good. Any more comments, questions before we close? Yes, sir. One more question from Go ahead, Alan. Side. Go ahead. So all panelists. In case of a giant vertebral bacillar aneurysm, the issue is the vasa vesorum. Sometimes, even after closing the all the feeding arteries, that means the vertebral artery or basilar artery, the aneurysm is still to grow and it still uh, produce bleeding or edema, just like a tumor. So the occlusion of the vertebral basilar artery sometimes doesn't work. What is the uh, opinion or suggestion from the panelists regarding these issues? How to solve this issue? But usually it helps if you occlude the proximal artery and there are no PCAMs. Dr. Drake, my teacher, he used to occlude one vertebra and then the other one with the slowly closing. But usually they, they were treated in his series, a huge series of 800 giant aneurysms. So he could treat them. So I'm wondering if you occlude the the proximal feeders if if it doesn't work so because usually these don't have good pecan so i i don't know the situation 
actually, I don't know the situation if the proximal occlusion doesn't help. Anyhow, the proximal occlusion helps by far better than if you push something inside the giant nerves, stents and coils, because they continue to grow and are buried inside the brainstem. But of course, there are some cases we cannot treat. Maybe this one you describe belongs to them. Okay, Mohammed. Okay, Mohammed. Mohammed is by, from Bangladesh, by the way. Okay, very good. Uh, any more comments? Any closing comments? Questions? Um, okay, you are. So uh, you began to say what we're going to speak about next week. You began. Next week we speak about anterior coronal artery aneurysms. Hugo will speak about uh, cardiac arrest with adenosine in aneurysm surgery, and then we have a guest lecturer from Russia speaking about artificial head or training of anatomy. And Shubin will speak about something about biopsies. And then we have uh, Henan Provincial People's Hospital and the Vascular team will give a lecture also. Very good. Okay, we look forward to that. Okay. Okay, very good. We'll see you. Good job, Yeah. Uh, I, uh, may I ask a favor, please? Uh, yes, go ahead. Received email. Uh, okay, we'll email talk. We'll, we'll talk after, announcing. sir. We'll talk after, sir. Okay, we're going to close this and thank you, everybody, for coming.